Hello students and welcome to another lesson in this educational series. My name is Miss Pilgrim and I'm happy to take you through the paces of fixing run-on sentences. Now I know that grammar can be a little bit challenging for some people, but don't worry. I'm going to take you through this step by step. And I'm hoping that by the end of these lessons, you'll be able to identify and fix your run-on sentences in your writing. So let's get started. Now before we talk about run-on sentences, let's review what a sentence is. Because we can't just take a bunch of words and put them together and call them a sentence. A sentence has qualifications. And what are these qualifications? I think you know them. So you know that every sentence begins with a capital letter. Additionally, a sentence must have the appropriate end mark. If it's a telling sentence, you want a full stop. If it's a yelling sentence, you want an exclamation mark. And if you're asking a question, of course, you need a question mark. Every sentence also must have a complete idea. It must make sense on its own. That's very important when we get to later in this lesson. So think about that. And a sentence has at least one subject and one verb. Now let's talk about clauses. A clause is a group of words that has a subject and a verb. And what is an independent clause? Well, an independent clause is one that stands on its own. It doesn't need any help from anything else in this sentence. It stands on its own. It stands on its own so much that an independent clause can also be called a simple sentence. So here's an example of a simple sentence slash independent clause. Mark plays games on his computer. Very simple. We have our subject, Mark. What is he doing? He's playing. And what's our predicate? He's playing games on his computer. So now we've gone through what a sentence is and what a clause is, let's get into this idea of the run-on sentence. Now you know some people think that a run-on sentence is just a very, very, very long sentence. But that's a myth. Because it is possible to have a very, very, very long, 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 long sentence that is grammatically correct. This is an example of one. Now, I wouldn't advise you to write a long sentence like this in your stories and reports. However, this is just an example to show you that a run-on sentence is not necessarily an extremely long sentence. So let's talk about what a run-on sentence is. A run-on sentence is a sentence that has two independent clauses, but there's a problem. You know what that problem is? The problem is that these two independent clauses are not joined properly. So it, it feels like if a visual of this would be you have an independent clause and then you glue together another independent clause and you smush them together. That's a run-on sentence. We don't want that. And some people, some people also think that by adding a comma, smushing a comma, and then adding another independent clause, that that also will work. But that does not work at all. So let's talk about that. A run-on sentence has two independent clauses that are not properly joined. So let's look at some examples of run-on sentences. <coughs> let's look at this one. I love football. I would play every day if I had time. Now, let's look at, these, look at this sentence. This sentence has two independent clauses. Can you picture what they are? First of all, we have this first independent clause. I love football. A complete thought begins with a capital letter, makes sense on its own, has a subject, <coughs> has a verb. And then the other part has been fused on, another independent clause has been fused on, has been smushed together with this first independent clause. I would play every day if I had time. This is also an independent clause. If you look at it, it has a subject, I would play is the verb, and every day if I had time, predicate. So you have two independent clauses stuck together. This is a run-on sentence, and it's not correct. <coughs> Let's look at this other run-on sentence. Josh attended the concert in January. He enjoyed it very much. And you notice I pause naturally there, but in this sentence, there is no opportunity to pause. So let me read it again as it is written. Josh attended the concert in January. He enjoyed it very much. This is a classic 
run on sentence. We have two independent clauses joined together, not joined together properly. So we have the first independent clause. Josh attended the concert in January. Perfectly good sentence. Subject is there, verb is there, predicate is there. Perfectly good on its own. And then it's fused to another independent clause. He enjoyed it very much. Again, subject is there, he, verb is there, enjoyed it very much. So we have these two independent clauses that are improperly joined. Now I would notice sometimes when I look at students' work, sometimes I see that they try to join independent clauses by using a comma. But keep this in mind, a comma is not strong enough to separate independent clauses. A comma has its job. And its job is not to separate independent clauses. So think about it very carefully. A comma is not strong enough to join independent clauses. But how do we fix it? <coughs> so let's look at this example of, of where a uh, comma is used improperly to join two independent clauses. I love football. I'd play it every day if I had time. Still, the comma is not strong enough there to join these two independent clauses. You have this independent clause, I love football, and it's stuck to this independent clause, I would play every day if I had time. This is incorrect. Same one, Josh attended the concert in January. He enjoyed it very much. We have one independent clause, we have the comma, and we have the other independent clause, also incorrect. This type of run-on sentence is called a comma splice. So what is a comma splice? It's simply where you take a comma and use it to separate two independent clauses. And as we said before, a comma is not strong enough to join two independent clauses. Let's review what we've learned so far today. True or false? A run-on sentence is a sentence that is too long. Think about it. If you said false, then that would be true, because a run-on sentence consists of independent clauses that are not properly joined. Here's another one. You can fix a run-on sentence simply by using a comma. If you were listening carefully to the lesson before, you would know that this is also false, because a comma is not strong enough to join two independent clauses. So, how do we fix run-on sentences? I think you're going to find out in the next lesson, so stay tuned. Thank you for watching. Hello again, students. Welcome back to this educational series where I'm taking you through the paces of fixing run-on sentences. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at fixing run-on sentences using full stops. But of course, you know, we also have to start, always have to start with a review. In the first lesson, we were reminded that a sentence, a proper sentence, begins with a capital letter, has the appropriate end mark, has one complete idea, and has at least one subject. You also learnt that an independent clause is a group of words that has a subject and a verb and can stand alone as a complete thought. For example, Mark plays games on his computer. You learnt in lesson one that a run-on sentence has two independent clauses that are not properly joined. Here's an example of a run-on sentence. It is always a good idea to prepare for a speech. It will make you less nervous. Now, I pause naturally there, but notice there is no pause. That is a classic run-on sentence. There are two independent clauses happening there. It is always a good idea to prepare for a speech. It will make you less nervous. In the previous lesson, you also learned about comma splices. And what are those? A comma splice has two independent clauses that are joined by a comma. 
So even if you put a comma in between, it is a good idea to prepare for a speech. It will make you less nervous. That is still not a good way of fixing a comma splice. Why? Because a comma is not strong enough to separate two independent clauses. So let's look in the next few lessons, we're going to look at some ways that we can fix run-on sentences. One way is that you can use a full stop. Another way is that you can use a coordinating conjunction, and yet another way is by using a subordinating conjunction. These words sound very big and fancy, but I'll take you through it, don't worry. So the first fix for, for a run-on sentence, and the easiest fix really, is to use a full stop. Let's look at this sentence. It is a good idea to prepare for a speech, this will make you less nervous. We have our run-on sentence right here. And we have two independent clauses. Read it carefully and see if you can find these two independent clauses. So here it is. It is a good idea to prepare for a speech. That's one complete thought. This will make you less nervous. That's another complete thought. We don't want to fuse them together without something in the middle, and we can't use a comma, so let's figure it out. It is a good idea to prepare for a speech. You add a full stop, and then you start another sentence. This will make you less nervous. So the easiest fix for, for a run-on sentence is to add a full stop and create separate independent clauses or separate simple sentences. That's correct. So let's look at the other comma splice that we explored earlier. Josh attended the concert in January. He enjoyed it very much. That comma there is not strong enough to separate the independent clauses. The writer has fused them together improperly. And so we need to fix this with our full stop. Josh attended the concert in January. We have our full stop. He enjoyed it very much. And we have our other full stop. And that is the way to fix that. That is the first way that we can use to fix a run-on sentence. So to summarize, one way to fix a run-on sentence or a comma splice is to separate the independent clauses with a full stop. When you're in doubt, that's your first best bet. Thank you for joining us. And the next lesson, we're going to work on, we're going to work on another way of fixing run-on sentences. Stay tuned. Welcome back, students, to the series on fixing run-on sentences. In this lesson, we're going to explore how to fix run-on sentence with coordinating conjunctions. That sounds like a really big, confusing term, but don't worry. We're going to work it out. You've heard this before. You've been studying for a very, very long time. Let's review, first of all, what run-on sentences are. As you know, a run-on sentence has two independent clauses that are not properly joined. And we have our example from the previous lesson. It is always a good idea to prepare for, for a speech. It will make you less nervous. You also were taught before that a comma splice has two independent clauses that are joined by a comma. And here it is again. It is a good idea to prepare for a speech it will make you less nervous. And what did we say about commas? They are not strong enough to separate two independent clauses. In the, in the previous lesson, you learned that the easiest way to fix a run-on sentence is by using a full stop. So let's look at this run-on sentence and see how it can be fixed with a full stop. It was a beautiful evening. The sun was gently setting. Notice I couldn't even pause there because there's nothing to tell me. And we have two independent clauses here. It was a beautiful evening, and the sun was gently setting. Note well that when you add a full stop to one independent clause, you have to remember to put the capital letter to indicate the beginning of the next sentence. So keep that in mind. And so we're going to the next fix, which is a little bit more complicated, but you can handle it. It's by using a coordinating conjunction. So what is a coordinating conjunction? It's really 
a word group that joins words. You know that a conjunction, is that they join words, right? They join words, they join phrases, and they can also join independent clauses. It's easy to remember the coordinating conjunctions because there are only seven of them. For, and, no, but, or, yet, so. I'll say that again. For, and, no, but, or, yet, so. And if you really, really want something to remind you about what co these coordinating conjunctions, think about fanboys. For, and, no, but, or, yet, so. These are the coordinating conjunctions that you will use to fix run-on sentences to make them compound sentences. So let's look at this comma splice. Christine was on time, Marilyn was late. As we've been saying over and over again, a comma is not sufficient to separate two independent clauses. It's not strong enough. And so, that's incorrect. And of course, you could have used a full stop to fix it, but let's find another way to fix this comma splice. Christine was on time, but Marilyn was late. So here, we've taken a coordinating conjunction, but, and joined the two sentences to form a compound sentence. Let's look at another one. I love painting, I love singing. Of course, we can fix this by adding a full stop and make them two simple sentences. But let's use a coordinating conjunction. Let's think about the coordinating conjunctions you know. Which one best fits here? Well, let's see. I love painting and I love singing because the extension of the things that she loves or he loves. So that's correct. Let's look at another fix, another sentence that we can fix. Nobody was, a, nobody was available to take me to the mall, I took a taxi. Classic run-on sentence. Two independent clauses, not properly joined. So how do we fix this? Nobody was available to take me to the mall, so I took a taxi. So we've taken this run-on sentence, we've added a coordinating conjunction, we've made it a compound sentence, we've fixed it. Let's look at another one. I hope I'm not making you hungry. You can have chicken, you can have fish. This is a comma splice because we have two independent clauses joined by a comma. But what can we do to fix this? Of course, you can write, you can have chicken, full stop, you can have fish, but let's try it with a coordinating conjunction. You can have chicken or you can have fish. And here we have a compound sentence. The independent clause, you can have chicken. The coordinating conjunction, or. And the independent clause, you can have fish. Or I could just make your life simple and say you can have chicken or fish. But that's another story. So to summarize, you can fix, so far you've learned that you can fix run-on sentences by using a full stop, using a coordinating conjunction. We're going to try one more way to fix run-on sentences. Are you ready? Stay tuned for the next lesson. Welcome back, students, to the final lesson in this series on fixing run-on sentences. And so we're going to be looking at yet another way to fix a run-on sentence. We're going to fix them using subordinating conjunctions. But of course, we must do some review. We have learned so far in this series that you can fix a run-on sentence by using a full stop. Let's look at this run-on sentence and how it can be fixed by using a full stop. It was a beautiful evening. The sun was gently setting. Classic run-on sentence. Two independent clauses not properly joined. It was a beautiful evening. The sun was gently setting. And that's an easy fix. And whenever you're in doubt about when to separate your run-on sentences, the full stop is often the best bet because it's the simplest one to remember. But if you want to challenge yourself some more, we can try another way. In addition to using full stops, we can use a coordinating conjunction to fix our run-on sentences. Let's look at this run-on sentence. 
I really wanted to go out, the rain spoiled my plans. Notice I couldn't even catch a breath there. There are two independent clauses in this run-on sentence that need to be joined properly. So, let's look at it. It was a beautiful evening, but the rain spoiled my plans. Maybe they had somewhere to go, and unfortunately, they couldn't go because of the rain. So here we have a run-on sentence that has been fixed with a coordinating conjunction, but. But today, now we have a third way of fixing a run-on sentence, and that is by using a subordinating conjunction. So let's do a quick review on what a subordinating conjunction is. You learned about the coordinating conjunctions before. You remember them, right? Fanboys. But now we have the subordinating conjunctions. And what are they? They are simply conjunctions that join words, phrases, and dependent clauses. And here are some examples of dependent, of subordinating conjunctions. So we've talked about what a subordinate conjunction is and how a subordinate conjunction operates in a subordinate clause. And what is a subordinating clause? Think about it as a dependent clause, a clause that needs something else to make sense in a sentence. So let's look at this clause here. As Sandy began to sing the national anthem, that is definitely a dependent clause. What's happening after she sings? We don't know. So this particular clause needs something else to make it make sense. So let's look at the other sentence. As Sandy began to sing the national anthem, the audience joined her. This is a complete sentence. We have the dependent clause, as Sandy began to sing the national anthem, and then we have the rest of the sentence telling us what happened. So that is a dependent or subordinating clause. Let's talk a little bit about how we place our subordinating conjunctions and our subordinating clauses. The subordinate clause with the subordinate conjunction can be placed at the start of a sentence or it can be placed at the end of a sentence. So let's get an example of when it starts. Whenever I eat oily food, I feel nauseous. Look at the, the subordinating conjunction whenever. It's at the beginning of the sentence. But you can have it also at the end. I feel nauseous whenever I eat oily food. So we're going to fix this comma splice by using a subordinating conjunction. I told the children I would read to them. They said they would sit by me to watch the pictures. Again, the comma is not strong enough there. So now we're going to fix this comma splice by using a subordinating conjunction. When I told the children I would read to them, they said they would sit by me to watch the pictures. So this is a little bit more complicated way of fixing a run-on sentence by using a subordinating conjunction, but it makes a sentence flow very nicely, don't you think? When I told the children I would read to them, they said they would sit by me to watch the pictures, and that gets a thumbs up from me. So to summarize, a run-on sentence can be fixed by using a full stop, by using a coordinating conjunction, and also by using a subordinating conjunction. But you know, it doesn't make sense knowing what these things are unless we practice. So let's see if we can fix some more run-on sentences using the rules we have applied so far in these lessons. So let's look at this one. I quickly took the envelope from my bag and gave it to my parents. My parents opened it. They grinned with pride. My grades were excellent. Now look, I can't breathe because we don't know where does the sentence, where does it end? We don't know. We need to fix this run-on sentence and make it make sense by applying the rules. So let's read this run-on sentence from a student's piece of work. I quickly took the envelope from my bag and gave it to my parents. My parents opened it. They grinned with pride. My grades were excellent. I couldn't even breathe because we couldn't figure out where to end the different clauses in the sentence. So let's figure out, can we apply the rules and the fixes that we learned in previous lessons to this piece of writing? Let's look at it. Let's find an independent clause. I quickly took the envelope from my bag and gave it to my parents. I think a full stop needs to go right there. And of course, if you have a full stop, then 
we must, in this case, we're going to add a subordinating conjunction. When my parents opened it, they grinned with pride. But still, my grades are excellent. That's still running on there. So we need to fix that. How can we fix it? I think I need to put a full stop. So let's read what we have so far. I quickly took the envelope from my bag and gave it to my parents. When my parents opened it, they grinned with pride. And of course, if you have a full stop, the next word must begin with a capital letter. And so we have that, and we have yet another sentence here, my grades were excellent. So I quickly took the envelope from my bag and gave it to my parents. When my parents opened it, they grinned in pride. My grades were excellent. So we have revised a run-on sentence and made it much more easier for your reader to read. I'm going to read it one more time. I quickly took the envelope from my bag and gave it to my parents. When my parents opened it, they grinned with pride. My grades were excellent. And I hope your grades will be excellent after these lessons. This is a portion of a story that a student wrote. Sparkle and I decided to go on a hike to Maracas. That seems so good so far. And Betty and Uncle Earl offered to drive us to the trail I borrowed Sparkle's hiking gear we left for adventure. After only 10 minutes into the hike, I was as tired as a dog running from a wolf sparkle had to encourage me for the rest of the trip. As a reader, I'm very confused because there are too many run-on sentences in this piece of work. Can we help the student to fix these run-on sentences using what we've talked about in earlier lessons? Let's look at it again. We have a perfectly good sentence at the beginning. Sparkle and I decided to go on a hike to Maracas. Aunt Betty and Uncle Earl offered to drive us to the trail. That seems like a good place to put a full stop. And so we have our sentence. Let's follow. I borrowed Sparkle's hiking gear we left for adventure. There's a problem there. Let's add a coordinating conjunction. I borrowed Sparkle's hiking gear and we left for our adventure. After only 10 minutes into the hike, I was as tired as a dog running for, from a wolf. I think a full stop needs to go there. And so of course, if we put a full stop, then we have to capitalize the next, the first letter of the next word. Sparkle had to encourage me for the rest of the trip. Oh, we've done some work here. Let's reread this paragraph and see if it flows more nicely. Sparkle and I decided to go on a hike to Maracas. Aunt Betty and Uncle Earl offered to drive us to the trail. I borrowed Sparkle's hiking gear and we left for our adventure. After only 10 minutes into the hike, I was as tired as a dog running from a wolf. Sparkle had to encourage me for the rest of the trip. Doesn't that sound much better? And I breathed more easily as well. And so we used many of our fixes to fix this paragraph that had so many run-on sentences. So students, remember all of the rules that we talked about, we talked about during the course of these lessons. Remember to reread your work very, very carefully. Remember to avoid run-on sentences and try these fixes. Add a full stop, add a coordinating conjunction, or add a subordinating conjunction. I think that you will do very well. Thank you so much for listening.